It's been 50 years today since Nigeria was plunged into a deadly civil war. On July 6, 1967, the Nigerian army marched into the southeast of the country, which had declared itself an independent Biafra. For three years, the country's military fought to suppress the breakaway movement. The conflict led to the death of more than a million people, mostly from hunger. And still today, there are renewed calls for a Biafran state, as the BBC's Tommy Oladipo reports. Recalling their days on the front line. They were young men when they fought against Nigeria for the breakaway state of Biafra. But their songs are not the only reminders of the brutality of the war. Patrick Adiole survived a shell attack. When I woke up, I got up and tried to walk, he says. I moved one leg, but realized I couldn't move the other. The Nigerians were stronger in battle, and Biafra eventually surrendered in 1970. The fighting ended, but the idea of Biafra really didn't. A new generation that did not experience the war is renewing the calls to leave Nigeria. And a leader has emerged. Two years ago, Namdi Kanu was arrested for his separatist rhetoric, but his detention only boosted his popularity. He's now out on bail, but remains defiant. Basic human development, basic economic development, basic social development can no longer be attained for the simple reason that there exists in the polity mutual suspicion, mutual hatred, mutual resentment. So the best thing for us to do is to separate. He's calling for a referendum on Biafran independence, but it's hard to know just how much support there currently is for that. If we actually talked to our grandparents, you know, if we actually saw what they actually went through, the hunger and everything, we, I don't think we want to go down that lane again. We want Biafra. We need change for once. We want Biafra. We need liberation. No employment. People are very, very unhappy. Nobody is happy in this country. Things are so tough for everybody. So if we have a smaller entity where we can assess things, you know, that are available for all, I think it's going to be better. The government has insisted it will not entertain any calls for secession. Igbo leaders have also called for a united Nigeria where there's equality. We are marching to the front. Now. Amen. As the conversation continues, it's clear the country needs to agree on a way forward to keep the dark past from crippling another generation. Tommy Oladipo, BBC News, Southeastern Nigeria. We are marching. We are marching. Well, hundreds of thousands of people were affected by the war. Many of them were young children at the time. I caught up with Philip Effiong Jr., who is the son of the vice president of Biafra, Philip Effiong. I started by asking him what he remembers most about the war. I remember the planes bombing. That's the one thing that stands out, the planes bombing, having to run away from them. I remember Enugu being shelled. And when I was, I remember clearly I was playing with my brothers and we thought it was thunder at first. Then we realized that it was, uh, um, shells were landing and, um, you know, the movements were just constant. I think we must have lived in at least five different cities or towns um, during the war. And Do you think the wider world had an inkling of what was happening inside Biafra? Most of the outside world didn't. Some did. And you've got to give credit to places like Ireland. You know, and the church, you know, made that possible. You know, the Catholic Church has had a long philanthropic tradition. So that helped um, spread the word. Do you think Nigeria or Nigerians have learned their lessons from the Biafran War? No. Absolutely not. You know, we're perhaps more divided than we ever were. I mean, first of all, the war wasn't about unity, but it even divided us more. Um, uh, to this day, you know, I mean, people can talk about, you know, um, having friends from different ethnic groups. But when you look at things like elections, for instance, or the fact that if I went and lived in a different state, you know, there'd be restrictions in, in the kinds of positions I could hold. You find out that no, you know, the, the, the concept of unity has not actually been realized. Do you think now is the right time 
for Biafrans to be allowed to set up their own state? Well, I, first of all, I don't have the details. You know, I've followed them a little bit. Um, I think there's something fundamentally wrong with their approach, one, of, one being the fact that they make it an evil problem. First of all, they've, they've bought into the propaganda that the enemy tried to sell, and that propaganda was that, oh, these evil people are out to uh, uh, um, take over Nigeria and, and dominate the minorities that live around them. You know, they're, they're evil people, and they're trying to disunite us. And you know, to say this was an evil, or for people to make it out as if it's an evil issue, you know, buys into that uh, 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 propaganda. You know, so it wasn't, of course. Uh, minorities were uh, extremely involved, died, suffered, played major roles. Uh, so that's one problem with. with, with I'm speaking there to Philip Ethion Jr., son of the former vice president of uh, Biafra. <laughs>